The gospel is meant to be good news. We know that's what the word gospel means. And of course, the whole of the gospel story is extraordinarily good news. Still, I'll be the first to acknowledge that there are particular passages and stories from the gospels that don't always land like good news. What about today? Listen to the news from Mark. The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. When the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. Whether or not you're a gardener or a farmer, the simple radical suggestion of this story is that the kingdom is not wholly reliant on your efforts. In fact, it's okay if you want to take a nap. I wonder, though, if we can receive this as good news. Are we able to receive the gift of being told that we have only a small part to play? And that once we've done that, once we've tossed a few seeds on the ground, we can go to bed and trust God to manage things for a while. This is one of those moments when we can really feel the disconnect between the message of our culture and the message of Jesus. The suggestion that we must earn and constantly strive and perpetually grind to establish our worth and place in the world is neatly turned on its head by Jesus, who reminds us that seeds will grow. And that in the meantime, why not put your feet up? Being busy is the default setting for so many of us. And truth be told, we get a lot of good things done by working hard. Good grades, mowed lawns, efficient workplaces, toned arms, the politicians of our choice. As Wendy Farley observes, these are reasonable things, and certainly little useful would happen if we did not work for it or if we remained indifferent to moral and political issues. It's just that this way of operating is not like the kingdom of God. Our difficulty arises in confusing the way of the kingdom with our ordinary, worldly way of doing things. The good news of today's gospel is that we can trust growth, kingdom of God growth to God. Farley continues, the harvest will come without us having to work for it because God adores us and it is this love that is the power of growth. The engine at the heart of things, the power that keeps the world spinning is the very love of God. God's deep care for us means that God hopes we will understand that while we are so very beloved, yet we are not the linchpin of every wheel. We are not actually in charge of holding everything together. It's because we are beloved that God creates a world in which we can pause, close our eyes, breathe a little more deeply, step aside for a time, in a word, trust. The upside-down logic of the gospel is that everything is not riding on us. Some things, in fact, need to be left alone. If the sower kept checking on the seed, exposing it to air, moving it around, overwatering, the seed would never germinate. It's better, in fact, if sometimes we get out of the way. Something bigger is happening that we're not needed for once the seed has been tossed. The seed, mustard or otherwise, grows beyond expectation producing a harvest we can hardly take credit for, creating a home in the world for creatures we'll never know. 
I love, too, the acknowledgement that something so ordinary and mundane is still also a mystery to us. The farmer doesn't actually know how the seed sprouts and grows. It's an everyday miracle, and life as we know it is dependent on it. And it's still beyond us to explain quite how. And it happens not in far off, otherworldly realms, but in fields and backyards. The kingdom is happening not in heaven and not someday, but right underfoot in the furrows, in the soil, each night while we sleep, and each day when we awaken. The kingdom is happening in homey, regular places, kitchens, at roadsides, and grocery stores, and such. The kingdom is unfolding. It is always partial, always emerging, and sometimes our task is the vital work of getting out of the way. Still, like a lot of news, depend, designating it as good or bad is often dependent on the mindset of the recipient. Rain, when I'd like to be out, is bad news to me. But rain, after days without it, is a blessing. So I wonder, this morning, for you, does it sound like good news to be told that your part is actually a small part? To be encouraged to go back to bed, get a good night's sleep, that you're not needed to keep the whole show going. Poet Robert Bly gives us a list of odd and oddball ideas to think about in his poem aptly titled Things to Think, including messages we might receive could we be open to their strangeness. The poem ends with this offering. When someone knocks on the door, think that he's about to give you something large, tell you you're forgiven, or that it's not necessary to work all the time or that it's been decided that if you lie down, no one will die. That's gospel good news right there. You are forgiven. It's not necessary to work all the time. It's been decided that if you lie down, no one will die. Beyond that, not only will no one die, but in fact, life will unfurl and grow. What would it be like to live inside this kingdom where rest allows the harvest to come? What would it be like to accept that our beloved status is simply given and is not built on our efforts nor our workloads? Perhaps practicing a little Sabbath this summer, perhaps embracing the humility that comes from acknowledging that it's not all hanging on you and me and our scrambling to keep up. What might you and I witness or awaken to if we stepped aside for a little while and then returned to see? The way a gardener walks around her yard one morning and notices blooms that weren't there the day before. The way I occasionally wake up from a good night's sleep with the answer to a question I'd spent so much time fretting about. We know the famous lines that for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. It's true. And there's also a time in between. There's a time between the scattering of seeds and the need for the sickle. And this is when and where the growth happens. This is the good news of rest, when we can't do more to make more happen. This is the startling and stunning good news of the gospel. We can trust that the kingdom of God is a kingdom powered by God's love, and there's actually nothing we can do to change that.